So let's go ahead and do some arc length examples. So uh, we're going to do this on a worksheet instead of the board because uh, there's some writing involved with the example statements here. Um, and it's going to be a little quicker if we just use a worksheet. So if you want a copy of this, uh, if you want to follow along, um, check the video description. There's a link in there. Click the link. You can open up this worksheet and uh, print it out if you want. So uh, remember arc length, uh, we talked about that a little bit when we defined radians. So let's uh, briefly review that. So remember that formula we had, uh, theta equals s over r. Where, uh, when we define what radians are in general, we define them to be, uh, you know, an angle in radians is given by uh, the ratio of the arc length to the radius of a circle. So if we, let's zoom in on this and make a picture. So if we want to draw a picture here, so here's our circle. Uh, it's got this radius r. Here's our angle theta. And then remember, s is the arc length uh, that corresponds to that here. So s. So remember, uh, theta in radians is defined to be this arc length s divided by the radius of the circle r um, for essential angle theta. So we can rewrite this formula. Uh, if we multiply both sides by r, then you'll have r theta equals s, or uh, in other words, s equals r theta. Okay, and that's the arc length formula there. Um, I mean, you might not always be looking for s, you might be looking for r or theta, and we'll do one example of each of those. But uh, the important thing here is that theta must be in radians. Theta must be in radians before you can use this formula. So if theta is not in radians, just convert it to radians um, using a, an appropriate conversion factor, uh, and you'll be good to go. So uh, s and r can have any units. They're going to have the same units, uh, whether it's centimeters, millimeters, inches, feet, yards, miles, uh, kilometers, whatever. Um, they can have any units, but they're going to be the same units. And theta always has to be in radians. And no matter what else is happening uh, with this formula, theta has to be in radians before you can use this formula. And the reason is that you know this is how radians were defined. Uh, theta equals s over r, that's how we define radians. So if theta is not in radians, uh, this formula doesn't apply. So theta must be in radians. Okay, so let's do uh, example one here. So a circle has a radius 6 meters. Find the exact length of the arc subtended by a central angle of 210 degrees. So remember this word subtended, we talked about that in an earlier video. Um, before we do this example, I want to point out that there are other words that we could use here. So one of them is just uh, made. So find the exact length of the arc made by a central angle of 210 degrees. Uh, instead of made, we could say intercepted. Find the exact length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 210 degrees. And uh, lastly, find the exact length of the arc swept out by a central angle of 210 degrees. So I just want to point these out because there are various words that we could use, but they don't change anything about the problem. Uh, the math is going to be all the same, so slightly different words, but they all mean the same thing in this context. So this arc uh, is subtended by a central angle. The arc is made by a central angle. It's, the arc is intercepted by a central angle. The arc is swept out by a central angle, uh, and so on. So swept out can also be used for uh, area, like area of a sector. Uh, we'll talk about that in uh, a later video. So anyway, um, before we start problems like this, it's always good to write down the formula uh, s equals r theta, and then s equals r equals theta equals. Okay, so uh, a circle has a radius 6 meters, so the radius we're just directly given at 6 meters, so that's good. Uh, find the exact length of the arc subtended by a central angle of 210 degrees. So we're looking for the arc length, so we're looking for s, and we're told that theta is 210 degrees. Okay, now be careful, right? We can't just plug these directly into the formula. Why not? Because theta is in degrees, and remember that uh, theta has to be in radians before we can use this formula. Okay? So all we have to do is just convert to uh, radians, though. So to do that, remember, we multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So uh, that's going to simplify to 21 pi over 18, and then we can pull out a common factor of 3. So that's going to be 7 pi over 6. Okay. So 210 degrees is 7 pi over 6 radians. So now, uh, here's our theta in radians. Here's our r that we were given. So now we can plug those into the formula. So s equals uh, r theta, which is 6. Okay, r is 6. Then we multiply by 7 pi over 6. Okay, so here's r, here's theta. Uh, and then the 6 is canceled. That's great. And we're just left with 7 pi. Okay. So uh, be careful. We have to put the right units, right? What are the units? Meters. Okay, because r was in meters. So s is going to have the same units. So s is actually 7 pi meters, 7 pi meters. Okay. And also be careful, this says find the exact length, find the exact length. So that means don't uh, toss this into a calculator and approximate. 
you know, pi is about 3.14, so if you multiply that by 7, uh, you'll get about 21 point something or other. Um, but don't do that, okay? This says exact length, so that means leave your answer in terms of pi. So when it says something like exact, uh, don't approximate with the decimal, um, especially with pi. You just have to leave it as pi. So 7 pi meters. Kind of a goofy number, but it is what it is. Okay? So pretty straightforward, right? The only thing we had to keep in mind here was uh, just convert the degrees to radians before we use the formula. Okay? So example two, a uh, little uh, trickier. An object travels four-fifths of the way around a circle. Uh, find the exact radius of the circle if uh, the object moved three centimeters. Okay, so write down the formula, s equals r theta, and then s equals r equals theta equals. Okay. So uh, the object travels four-fifths of the way around a circle. So what's that tell us? Well, let's, uh, it's kind of tricky, so let's keep reading. Find the exact radius. So we're looking for the radius. So r is question mark. And we're told that the uh, object moved three centimeters. Okay, so if we imagine this object moving around a circle, um, it will have moved three centimeters. So that's actually the arc length, okay. three centimeters. So this object actually moved uh, three centimeters on the circle. So if we draw a picture here, which might not be accurate, so this object moved on the circle three centimeters. So this distance that it moved is three centimeters. So that's uh, the arc length s. Here we're told that that's three centimeters. So what's this uh, theta then? Well, that's going to be uh, this four-fifths of the way around the circle. So what's that? Um, well, four-fifths, so actually the picture would be more like this, I guess. Because if the object moves four-fifths of the way around the circle, uh, that's kind of sort of more like this. But, you know, the picture doesn't really matter. It's uh, not going to help us too much. It might help you visualize a little bit, but we're really just plugging stuff into a formula here. Uh, so we don't have to worry too much about the picture. Um, and if your instructor is really strict, you might not be able to use a picture. So anyway, we have this here. But uh, So the object travels four-fifths of the way around a circle. So that's actually going to give us our theta. So four-fifths of the way around a circle, that's four-fifths of a revolution. Okay? So remember, revolution, uh, rev. So one complete revolution around a circle, right? This is one complete revolution, and the object went four-fifths of that. So theta is four-fifths of a revolution. Well, we have to convert that to radians, right? How many radians are in one revolution? Uh, two pi. Okay, because 2 pi is one revolution, one complete revolution around a circle. So 2 pi radians for every one revolution. So the units of rev cancel, that's good, that's uh, what we're trying to do. So then 4 fifths times 2 pi is 8 pi over 5. Okay. And you know, again, we're looking for exact, uh, exact values here, so leave this as 8 pi over 5, don't approximate with the decimal. All right, so now uh, s equals r theta, we're looking for r. So this implies, okay, this double error, uh, that means implies, s equals r theta implies that r equals uh, s over theta. Okay, so just divide both sides of this by theta. Okay, divide both sides by theta, and then you'll get r equals s over theta. So we know s, we know theta in radians now. We just found out uh, what theta is in radians. So now we just plug these into the formula. So r equals uh, 3, okay, s is 3, then we divide by 8 pi over 5. And if you divide by 8 pi over 5, what are you multiplying by? You're multiplying by 5 over 8 pi. So 3 times 5 over 8 pi is just uh, 15 over 8 pi. Okay. And again, we have to be careful here. Because uh, first of all, we're looking for an exact answer. So don't approximate with the decimal. Leave it in terms of pi. Uh, it can't be simplified at all. And also, we have to be careful with the units. So remember, R and S have the same units. S has units of centimeters. So R also has units of centimeters. And that's our answer here. Okay, so that's example two. Uh, last example in this video, example three. A circle has diameter eight millimeters. Find the exact radian measure of the central angle that subtends an arc of length 12 millimeters. So this one's going to be a little more straightforward than example two. But again, s equals r theta. Uh, s equals r equals theta equals. Okay. So a circle has diameter eight millimeters. So uh, r is going to be 8 millimeters divided by 2, right? So remember, r is the radius. Uh, let's write that more legibly. So r is the radius, and the radius, remember, is half the diameter. So we take the diameter, which we're given as 8 millimeters, divide that by 2, okay, and then we're going to get 4 millimeters for the radius. So that's uh, kind of the only tricky thing here. So then we want to find the uh, exact radian measure of the central angle, so we're looking for theta. And this theta subtends an arc of length 12 millimeters. So s is 12 millimeters. Okay. So we're looking for theta. So if we divide both sides of this equation by r, 
then that's going to tell us that uh, theta equals s over r. Right? Remember, that's kind of where the formula came from. So when we defined radians, that's the original formula we had. But anyway, um, so now uh, we just directly plug these in here. So theta equals s over r. Uh, s is 12 millimeters. We're given r we found was half the diameter, which is half of 8, which is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay? So then uh, theta equals 3. And uh, that's pretty much it, right? So theta is in radians. So this is find the exact radian measure. Uh, theta is already in radians, because if you use this formula, theta has to be in radians. So no matter what the units of S and R are, uh, no matter what these units are, you can just, uh, you'll always be guaranteed that theta is in radians. Okay. So if you want, you could say theta equals uh, 3 rad or radian, if you want to be explicit. But it's OK to just say this. Um, because it's clear from the context. So anyway, that's uh, three examples of arc length.